Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And boy, we're bringing you one of our favorite shoes to talk about, at least. Ever. Yeah. Ever. It's the Nike Alpha Fly version three. Not gonna lie, was really, really nervous about this one. Why, Thomas? Because they took off the next percent? Nope. <laughs> because the second version of it pretty much killed all your dreams. It did. It killed all my dreams. I was going to StockX. I was getting another pair of the Alphafly 1s to race well, in. Let's just talk about this for a sec. If you were racing, what was on your feet? Alphafly 1s. And when the two came out and you were so disappointed by it, what did you end up doing? Buying more Alphafly 1s. All right, how many Alpha Fly 1s do you currently have? I might have 11 pairs. Yeah, and I'm with Megan. It's one of the most enjoyable marathons she used to run in. I know that when they do these studies, sometimes they say that it does help a less efficient runner be more efficient, sometimes it doesn't. It's all over the board with what they tell you. What I can tell you is late stages of a marathon, these air bubbles under your foot, really help keep that sense of forward momentum. They remind you to keep pushing off your toe. They give you that bounce and that's why we love it. So then the version two came out, it's slappy. They increased the drop. So it went from a four millimeter to an eight millimeter drop. They kind of widened out some of the base here and did some things behind the paw that kind of, it irritated like my joints. Like when I landed, it would slap and kind of like control the joint inwards and it ended up messing with my knees. What was it about that you didn't like? They took the magic out. All of the fun, all of the magic removed. It just didn't feel as bouncy. Yeah. Just didn't feel. Not good. Magical. Meg, I guess we can get to it before we give the whole review. Is the magic back? The magic is back. All right, what makes this one magical? Let's go over it starting at the top. All right, so this upper probably looks familiar. They're using the Atom Knit. It's uh, Nike's knit that they use, but this is their latest iteration of it. So, um, I mean, it feels really comfortable to me. It's super minimal. So like the upper is extremely light, very breathable, but they've added this extra woven knit in the tongue and around the collar so that it feels comfortable. And it integrates the laces in there, so it's all part of one piece. It's really nice. There's no gaping around the ankle like there used to be. There, it just fits really well. It's almost sock-like. And again, it's hydrophobic, so it's not gonna carry your sweat with you. It's not gonna carry rain with you. It's gonna shed that off, and you're gonna be good to go. Yeah, I used to feel like the Alpha Fly and even the Vapor Fly in some instances was a shoe where I loved the the underfoot feeling so much, I was willing to deal with the uppers. You that could they have had. had a sandal on top. But now you've got a lovely, comfortable upper, and they've continued the magic underfoot. Okay, something else that's gonna happen right before you get down to the midsole that we need to talk about. A lot of people had problems with the arch on the original and definitely on the second one. On the second one, I actually had to send one pair of shoes back to Nike to get another pair because the arch was just a little bit glued in incorrectly and caused a really nasty hot spot. The arch has really been tamed in this one. Yeah, so normally you would feel it right on step in. I did not get that at all with this one. They've also flattened out this whole midsole here. So it used to be more decoupled. It felt a little bit more mechanical. Now you have this straight- One piece. One piece midsole. One, one piece of foam, but they did a lot to reduce the midsole. So you're gonna see some reductive things in this midsole, Meg. What are they? Yeah, so if you can look underneath of the shoe, they've really removed a ton of foam, especially right around this AirPod. And so what's really nice about that is that it gives the AirPod more space to collapse and expand. So you actually get, I think, even more of that bouncy feeling from the AirPod. It also takes some weight off the shoe. So with that foam being gone in this one piece, it's actually a lighter shoe, my size 10 and a half, comes in an ounce lighter than the previous version, which is a ton. If you think about going up and down for an ounce, it's typically around 50,000 steps or something like that for an average marathoner to go through a marathon. That's a lot of weight that you're pulling up and down. So any energy saving you can get in the marathon is great. This one came in at 7.75 ounces, which is under eight ounces for an Alpha Fly. The previous, the original was 8.35 ounces for me, and then it got heavier at 8.75 ounces 
for the uh, Alpha Fly 2. So for this to come in under eight ounces, people who are saying, I don't, you know, I want the Vapor Fly because it's lighter or this and that. Now you get this explosive feeling from the AirPods in a light, lightweight package. It's pretty incredible. And what you can see here, if you look down at the bottom, the aggressive plate that they have in there, the foam kind of rides along the side. So it's still one piece, but it's really the least amount of foam you can get away with to have this much cushioning and still have all that underfoot. So one thing I think that people didn't love, well, some people either loved it or hated it about the previous version is that it felt a little bit more mechanical. Whereas now that you have this continuous midsole, it kind of rides more closely to the Vaporfly, but you still get that pop from the AirPod. It does have a smooth transition from heel to toe now where when you say mechanical, I'll say it, it just, with the decoupling, you kind of felt two different parts of the shoe. So through your stride, what it did was it would switch up my stride. And I did when we even got the original version, I, I almost had to like get used to running in the shoe because it felt so different than anything else you ran, ran in. This, like you said, with the continuous midsole, that smooth transition, the pop off the toes, it feels much more closer to like a traditional running shoe. Mm -hmm. But man, that pop, I can't get over it. Yeah, it still has the magic, which is the best part. So we come down, we've got the foam. Now we've got fast shot rubber on the front here. They always switch up the rubber a little bit. I found that it's never really been an issue for me. The grip does feel a little more like toothy in this one. Yeah. I feel like it does have a little more bite. Yeah. Um, what did you think of it? Yeah, so I actually wore this for an entire marathon, CIM, um, and I didn't have any issues with traction or anything like that. And I did run, a shake out running it earlier in some wet, wet pavement and same thing, no issues there. Yeah, one of my workouts was right after a rainy morning in colder temperatures, so it's that day where you're feeling like there's certain areas that have that little bit of frost on the ground and you're like, I don't know if I should take this corner as fast as I would like to and this seemed to hold, I was confident around it. I will say that the back rubber doesn't have much of a grip there if you're gonna hit, like land on the heel and strike, but I think it's the rubber back there is more for durability of the heel yeah. than it is for grip. Definitely coming off the toes, you feel it. It's got bite. Yeah. At this point, there's the Alpha Fly and there's everything else. Like this shoe is just such a leap and just feel so good. And when I was doing my workout, I was trying to do 400s at a certain pace. And again, you know, I was going by effort. I suck at pacing. So just going on hard effort. And I was actually surprised when I finished because my paces were faster than they should have been. Now, I do think there is somewhat of a placebo effect. You get in this shoe and you go, geez, I want to run fast. And it feels fast. It looks fast. It's the Alpha Fly, Kipchoge. Kipped them. Everybody's wearing this shoe. It, you just feel like you put it on, you want to roll. So we both put in miles to test out the shoe. You of course put in a hard marathon effort and you did easy runs to kind of like jog to get ready for the marathon yep. and stuff. Was there any pace that you did not like this shoe at? No, I think that's probably one of the best aspects too. I think because you have this really comfortable upper, and the shoes just, they're smooth in the transition and they just feel good at all paces. So I was running sub six, I was running close to eight minute miles, I, like all over the lot and it felt great for everything. I don't wanna name somebody specifically, so I'll use a pseudonym, maybe somebody named Jen Bonson. He happens to like running in this shoe for just about every workout he told you, right? Yeah, so he got this shoe and wore it for every single run until CIM. So I guess that was a couple weeks worth. And I think he's got over 150, maybe even 200 miles on it at this point. So not slow runs, not fast runs, just every run. Every run. All right. Why not? So Meg, what are you giving the shoe? This is definitely getting a green for me. I mean, it's the best Alpha Fly that we've had yet. I would definitely give it a green too, Meg. This is just a fun shoe. It's gonna be hard to beat this shoe. I don't know what you're gonna have to do to beat this shoe. We're gonna put together a between two shoes between this and the Adidas Evo 1. Yep. And uh, we're probably also gonna show a more in-depth video on the differences between one, two, and three versions of this shoe. We've been running in them all. We love two out of them. And Megan, you're saying this is now your favorite. Yep, this is it. All right, so that's all for today. Anything else you want to say? 
Um, if you haven't yet, definitely go and subscribe to this channel, like this video, follow us on Instagram, we're on Strava, you can join our group over there. And we have two podcasts, The Drop, which comes out every Friday and Monday, and Fuel for the Soul with Megan Featherston, which comes out every two weeks. And we're on our march to 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So if you want, share this with a friend, get somebody else to subscribe, subscribe yourself. It really help us out. We're excited to hit that 100K. Uh, number so help us out also if you ever want to buy some merch i think there's some down here in the description we have one of our new hats is like my favorite of all time it's a great run hat so check it out and we'll talk to you soon